Hello everyone and welcome to Gearock Farms. In today's video we are going to wrap up our uh, lumber sawing project that we had going on up in the back uh, 40 there. We've got the four-wheeler here all packed full of tools, chainsaws, some fuel. Dad he just uh, finished sharpening our, uh, our steel 500 so that thing is ready to rip and cut up some firewood. If you've been watching the videos, you know that we uh, developed quite a bit of a, a pile when it came to waste material. So we're gonna we're cut some of that up for firewood and put some of it on a brush pile. We got a huge pile of sawdust to clean up. Definitely a, a cleaning project. He already hauled the mill back and got that all cleaned up. Got all the sawdust off of it and I think everything uh, lubed up and oiled and put away. That way it's relatively uh, ready to go for next time. And uh, before I leave, I'll show you uh, his lumber pile here. And there is what he has to show for it here. Two nice uh, stacks of lumber, some nice veneer lumber. We're very excited to see how this all pencils out, if it was worth the time and the effort when we go to sell this stuff. I'm sure it all depends on the market and things like that. If you haven't uh, seen it in the other videos, we mentioned that this lumber is gonna go for more than likely flooring or trim or uh, cabinets. Uh, some of that nicer stuff like that, that veneer lumber. This is all stuff like cherry and hickory. I think there might be some oak in here, but I'm sure we'll document that process when it comes time to actually haul this. It's over to the, the buyer and it'll be exciting to get an idea of uh, what type of uh, business endeavor this can be. But while I'm walking around here talking to you guys, Dad is already on his way up there with the skid steer, the new skid steer and the grapple along with a bucket. So uh, we better hurry, get on the four-wheeler and meet him up there and uh, get to work up there, get, to, get everything cleaned up up there.
We are making some really good progress. It's some pretty tedious work though, but the the cut pile is uh, dwindling down and uh, the firewood pile is growing. We got uh, all the scraps cleaned up over there and uh, a lot of the bigger stuff worthwhile we got put here. Otherwise, any of the smaller, really scrappy scrap pieces got put in that brush pile over there. It's so tedious that it's not worth cutting through and, and picking up all that stuff. And even if it turns into ash, we'll still uh, put it to use throwing it on a field or something like that. So it's not completely going to waste. But it's just not very efficient to mess around with all that small stick-like pieces. just look at the amount of bark that was under the mill you know that's a, a bucket full there it's crazy to think that we didn't even saw that many logs if a guy was to do this commercially you got to have some uh, decent way to get rid of the waste it definitely adds up quick mid video here I want to remind you guys if you haven't already go check out gearockfarms.com that's where you can find these hats and uh, in the future here we'll be selling some other items as well so go check us out gearockfarms.com remember to subscribe share like all that fun stuff but that's enough of that stuff watch this skid steer scoop up some sawdust
Okay, we are wrapping up up here. Dad just got finished with the skid steer using the bucket and kind of grooming up some of his ruts. The plan is here for spring is that we'll more than likely do some kind of light tillage up here. And uh, we were debating planting some corn or uh, just seeding it back down. And dad's leaning toward just seeding it back down in grass, especially because we're so far back in the farm here. And in my opinion, if we're gonna put corn here, you're gonna wanna put a decent amount. Otherwise the deer are just gonna wreck it back here and trying to fence it off from the rest of the pasture and all that. If we're gonna do some, we're gonna have to make it uh, a bigger section come further down the hill or something like that, make it worthwhile. But it gets pretty steep here. So the plan is to start making our way back to the farm. We got a down tree we gotta clean up on the way. So let's uh, start heading that way. So we stopped on the way back and uh, dad wanted to update you guys on his project we've been working on. If you pay attention to the videos, we talked about this prior and dad, he has been really busy cleaning up some uh, some brush here. I spent about two and a half weeks down here, a little bit every afternoon, because no snow, but it still was a little greasy, so he couldn't do really nothing with the skid steer, which is good if you got all kinds of time. But I was cotton and burning it at the same time, so the pile wouldn't get so big and that. A lot of hand work, but that's the best way to do it. And then we had our excavator, John, look at this already a week ago, and he's excited about it. He's excited about getting this all cleaned up. We're thinking of putting another small dike up in that ravine there to maybe put a culvert in it. Just to keep the water from ruining this when it gets fixed. I mean, that's my concern when you start messing with some waterway gully stuff like this. But right now, if we just leave it, everything I cut off, it's, it's going to look like a forest here in about two years. Yeah, it'll almost get worse. They'll sprout more trunks out of that stump that dad. That well, they, they say when you cut a tree off, usually about 20 come to the funeral. That's the joke of it all. But that's what, you're right, that's what happens now. I think the early 90s, I did cut this all out. Everything but this cottonwood, of course. And then uh, I can't mow it. You know, that's the issue. So if you're going to do something with it. So the theory is, is uh, if the pond's healing up real nice, we get any kind of good weather anytime this summer, unless it's going to start raining every day and all that, we're just going to let it wait. We're going to wait until we get, you know, good conditions. But you, I want to get it so we can mow it. You know, so even if it's steep and a little uneven, just so we can go through, kind of trim up these banks a little bit and stuff. We did prune a couple apple trees. I know these had really good apples on in the fall here, so I did prune them. There's a couple other ones, they weren't so great, so they went. Now I got a couple other smaller trees there I left grow too up on the bank where they're in nobody's way. That'll be something for you to tell your kids about. That'll be exciting to see when this project's finished. If you guys pay attention to the channel, you know that this was a, a big uh, cleanup project and dirt work project and look how well that's held together. There is a little rill in the middle there that's starting to wash out, but considering how steep that is and the camera doesn't do it justice that uh that really held yeah. up nice yeah and then being that we got all these trees out now there'll be less shade i did get some dirt and just put a couple clumps in the, in there you want to detour the water from that rut it's starting to make i mean it's nothing critical yet but that's just it you got to keep up with it so then the plan is and we'll see how this all shapes up but we do got some rock we put there to keep that from washing the first round we did but to get maybe two or three different spots on the way down through here. And then maybe after everything heals up really good after a few years into it, we could take those out, you know, so that we wouldn't have to be mowing around them. Yeah, just kind of some uh, has, little little dikes to slow the it water It has down. to be something because there's too much grade going on here. But what, what this is, is we're probably standing on about eight feet of topsoil. Yeah. From a hundred years of farming upstream, I mean, that's just a given. And they used to plant wheat and oats and all kinds, I don't know, my dad said that too. They, the, the, the swamps are so wet that the horse would get stuck in there. The creeks weren't that deep, so then they farmed the hills really hard until some gullies started. Pretty much what happened, they plowed downhill, it wore out. You know, it just kind of got where the fertility wasn't good or they had some disease going in the wheat or whatever it was. But in the meantime, the erosion just took over. 
It ain't like today where we can get in here with some equipment and, and try to make adjustments right away or put cover crops in, whatever it takes. Yeah, no-till, all that fun stuff. So that's an update on that project. Make sure to stay tuned uh, to the channel, especially this summer, to see this thing uh, progress. This summer or spring or whenever it works out, yep. we'll, we'll film it. Yep. And there you have it. We have made it back down to the farmyard. It's great to have that project out of the way and it was nice to update you about the future projects we're gonna have up there. I'm gonna end off the video here. Thank you all for sticking to the end. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and share it with someone who you think would enjoy it as well. It helps us out a lot. And we will see you all next time.